Welcome to the second GGPA2 course on data visualization. Here we're going to build on the skills you learned in the first course to develop a wide variety of plots that are not only appealing, but also meaningful. We'll examine the following three layers in detail, statistics, coordinates, and facets. Plus, we'll review some data viz tips so that you can make the most of your new skill set. Let's get started with the stats layer. There are two broad categories of functions in this family those that are called from within a geome, and those that are called independently. As you may have guessed, all the statistical functions begin with stats, followed by an underscore. Even those called from within the geome layer can be accessed independently in this way. We already saw a stats function when we used geome histogram. Recall that under the hood, this called stat bin to summarize the total count in each group. You may also remember that when we discussed geome bar, I mentioned that its default stat is set to bin. So we could have produced the same result if we used geome bar. The same thing happens with geome bar, which just calls stat count under the hood. If we called stat count directly, we'd get the same plot since it would call geome bar. So we can see that specific geomes and stat functions are related. Stat smooth can be accessed with geom smooth shown here. The standard error, which is shown as a gray ribbon behind our smooth, is by default a 95% confidence interval. We can remove this by setting the SE argument to false. We know we are calling stat smooth because of another warning message. Geom smooth is using method equal to lowest and formula Y dependent on X. Lois is a non-parametric smoothing algorithm that is used when we have less than 1,000 observations. It works by calculating a weighted mean by passing a sliding window along the x-axis and is a valuable tool in exploratory data analysis. The span argument controls the degree of smoothing, which is the size of the sliding window. Smaller spans are more noisy, as we can see here. The method argument can also define parametric models, such as LM, shown here, or GLM, RLM, and GAM. For groups larger than 1000, the method defaults to GAM. Notice that in both the lowest and the LM examples, the model is calculated on groups defined by color. We'll look at how to override this in the exercises. By default, each model is bound to the limits of its own group. But for parametric methods, we can use the full range argument to make predictions over the entire range. Just as we'd expect, the error increases the further away from our data set we attempt to define an estimate. We can access smoothing using the geom smooth function or the stat smooth function. There are many other stats functions which we will encounter throughout the rest of the data visualization courses, some of which are particularly useful for summarizing data, like box plots or dealing with very large data sets, such as bin dot, bin hex, bin 2D, and contour. We'll encounter those in the next course when we consider graphics of large data sets. We'll encounter other functions throughout the exercises. In general, you won't have to call these functions directly, but it's worth knowing about the relationship between geomes and their respective statistics. You'll understand warning and error messages better, and the help pages for the stats functions are often more informative if you need to adjust any parameters. Okay. Let's see how stats functions work in practice.